Hey everybody, Adam Savage here, and I am surrounded by Mythbuster props for an excellent reason. Let me explain. Uh, the props behind me have spent the last 10 years traveling around the United States as part of a groundbreaking traveling science exhibition called Mythbusters, the explosive exhibition. I'm exceedingly proud of what we built, uh, and I hope you got a chance to see it because it is no longer happening. But don't be sad because now it is your chance to own a piece of Mythbusters history. All of these props have been gathered here in Southern California where they are about to be auctioned off through Prop Store to benefit the Grant Imahara Steam Foundation. And I am highlighting some of the pieces and I have here what looked just like a couple of bottles of liquor, which they actually are. I believe this is some kind of beer and this is some kind of wine, but on Mythbusters, we were never actually allowed to show any brands, which my crew will tell you drove me bananas. Understand, we're a reality show. We have like the legal ability to show that there are brands in the world. It's just that there's also this thing called late stage capitalism, which everything has to be monetized. So every time you showed a brand, you want to extract money from the person whose brand you're showing. Therefore, we're constantly having to cover over brands. Now, that doesn't sound in and of itself like a problem until you have, let's say, chemical cabinets full of rubbing alcohol and acetone and naphtha, and somebody's taken black tape and put it over all the labels, and then you don't know what's in there. You go to peel off the black tape and see I'm getting freshly mad again. It doesn't matter. However, the reason I'm explaining this is to say, when we had advance notice that we would have products in the frame, we would often use that opportunity to make our own fake labels so we didn't have to worry. Um, one story from the very beginning of Mythbusters, because they used to get very upset whenever we would show a product and then they'd have to blur it. And they would literally send me an email explaining how many dollars it costs to blur something frame by frame. And so at one point we're on this location and we're talking to this old dude and he says, by the way, I have the largest collection of oil cans in history. And he had this like abandoned gas station and this room full of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of oil cans from the history of oil cans, like from the like 1890s. And so I walked in there and this room is just, it's nothing but product labels everywhere. And so I said, this man has the largest collection of blurs in history. In fact, this blur is over a hundred years old. <laughs> They did blur it out and they didn't complain to me about it, so I guess they got the joke. Okay, so we would often make our own labels and Mythbuster wine and Mythbuster's beer are two terrific examples. This is a label that is a great example of my graphic design because I love one font and it's Futura Extra Bold. You can see that it's Futura Extra Bold. Um, it says, warning, this behavior may lead to excessive behavior, dangerous stunts, please drink responsibly. Yeah, there's my joke. And then here is a circle with a line going through it of a guy lying in the gutter drunk with the bottle spilling out. Um, that's Jamie. And the reason that's Jamie is because we were filming a sobriety test episode. Wow, I'm trying to remember what the actual myth was. I just remember specifically that we had to get, oh, it was blind driving. That's it. The myth is that if you, the myth is that a blind person could drive a car if someone in the backseat was giving them directions. Right. And the specific telling of the myth is that a guy went to a party and got super drunk and he couldn't drive himself home. So he got his best friend to drive him home. The wrinkle was his best friend was blind. So we wanted to test that. Jamie and I spent some time putting on blindfolds, driving in a closed course, giving each other directions. We did okay at that. Then we had an actual blind guy who was willing to get behind the wheel. Super awesome. And we got in the back and we gave him instructions and found actually the blind guy was a better driver than either Jamie or I. And here's why. The blind guy grabbed onto the wheel and we would say, okay, step on the accelerator, start to move, he's moving. And then we say, turn left. And he just does this. Turn right, he just does this. With, uh, with me, if you tell me to turn left, I'm still thinking about the road I saw when I closed my eyes. I have all this bias about where we are and what a straight line is. And I'm trying to adjust a little bit. The blind guy wasn't doing any of that. So he was a much better driver than us. So we got out to a, a, a location we called Zombie Town, which was this abandoned military base down near Monterey, 
and we got the blind guy, we got a car, we're in a closed course, and it's time to get Jamie drunk, per the original telling of the myth. And Jamie says, well, can I have some maker's mark? And we're like, absolutely, you can have some maker's mark. And he's like, great. And then he's like, he's got his maker's mark, and he's like, you guys mind if I drink, get drunk in the gutter? I think that's kind of funny. And we were like, Jamie, if you want to lie down in the gutter and get drunk, we agree with you. That is freaking hilarious. And then Jamie, per this picture, laid down in the gutter and drank himself enough Maker's Mark to get drunk. It's one of the greatest things I have ever seen. And then he stood up and he's doing sobriety tests with the cops. Such a fantastic day. Um, so that's the story behind this label. This was designed by our Mythbusters very own Katie Winchester, uh, a genius of graphics in Mythbusters headquarters in Sydney, Australia. She was not part of our regular crew in the United States, but she was absolutely part of our regular crew in the United States. We relied so much on her amazing graphical talent and all of the graphical artists at Beyond. Um, one of the great things about our last season is we had this small budget surplus. And if you'll notice the final season of Mythbusters has better graphics than any of the other seasons, it's because Katie got to spend an extra week for every episode just going in and layering in the arrows and the measurements and the graphics and other little things to tell the story much better. And every now and then we asked her graphical talents to be used in the course of making a label. So she made some Mythbusters beer here with me and Jamie. There's some wheat, there's some explosives. Um, and let's see, what does it say on the back? I haven't read it. A savage beer brewed using traditional Heinemann technology dating back to the American Civil War. It's strong, subtle, and strangely hair suit and garners further flavor from the surprisingly long aging process used in its manufacture. I've never read that paragraph. That's hilarious. Use responsibly. I ask the same thing of you. Should you bid upon and win these beautiful items, you will get a couple of genuine pieces of Mythbusters history. Uh, the URL is propstore.com slash Mythbusters. Again, all proceeds from this auction go to benefit the Grant Imahara Steam Foundation, and I exhort you to drink responsibly. That was hilarious. I had no idea all that was on the back.